Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosso, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us again for another Champions Journey. Well, despite being only 24 years old entering the 2014 U.S. Women's Open at Pinehurst No. 2, Michelle Wee had long been a household name in golf circles. She had won the U.S. Women's Amateur Public Links at 14, contended in the Women's Open at 16, and competed in men's events as a teenager. Wee had also become a successful professional, but largely due to injuries, wins had been hard to come by. But after back-to-back -back 68s, she was leading the championship she coveted the most by three at the halfway point. That's right, and we maintained a share of the lead going into the final round, needing 18 holes of solid golf to get her long-awaited first major title. She would eventually seal the deal, but her day was not without a bit of drama. Let's take a trip back to 2014 and relive Michelle Wee's journey to her first major title. This evening, let's pick up live action at number five, and Mark Rolfing has the coverage. Good afternoon, Sean. Monster drive by we just 177 to the whole whole location over on the right. And that will be a good distance, but it will be repelled by that Donald Ross green. Not too bad a spot, but not exactly what she had in mind either. Carter three under par and tied with Stacy Lewis for the lead. Back to five. This is Michelle Wee's fourth shot now coming back up the hill longer than a third, and that is a beauty. So if she could somehow get that one in for a five. That's right. Uh, this hole is in a tricky little spot right at the top of a small crest. The first little bit of her putt is in into the grain, and then everything starts going down grain away. See that familiar setup she has to her putts. Her back is starting to gradually work up and away a little bit more from the ball, not quite as far down as she used to be. Got it just wide of the hole. What an ugly six that is for Michelle. After a beautiful drive and decent second shot. Took five strokes from 177 yards. That's never good. Well, if you take a look at Michelle Wee, you're going to see some. Six was a very tough par three for the men. They frequently played it at around 240 yards. The women today playing it from 174 yards. And Michelle, like uh, all the players, trying to hit it to the middle of the screen. The entire week last week produced 12 birdies at this par three. Yeah, that was a beautiful swing out. That was just a for the closest to the pin. Pro Shop merchandise. Sixth hole, Michelle Wee for birdie. Another player who uh, got a degree from a Pac-12 school. Michelle out of Stanford. Kay, that is self-promotion. Hi, I didn't go the, I didn't mention that other school. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Dottie, it's hard to believe it was 14 years ago where I first met Michelle Wee. She was a 10-year-old who had just qualified for the Women's Amateur Public Links, not very close by at Legacy Golf Club in Aberdeen. 12 years since she qualified for her first LPGA event, and to be a veteran at 24. On the stem meter. Michelle Wee, a little bit of trouble off the tee here at seven. First time today playing out of the native area, and she's going to. Well, she kind of laughs at it a little bit. Can't believe what happened. And take one more look at this, Dottie. What'd you see? Well, I saw a ball off the fairway for starters, and that's not how to play this golf course. It's trying to hit a cut with a seven iron. Does anything get between the ball and the club face? A little bit. It's just very, very difficult to maneuver the golf ball out of this. You better be comfortable and confident in these bunkers. Oh, she's lucky that stayed up. That was very close to catching the false edge. One more time with this, Dottie. Yeah, look how wide this stance is. She gets herself beautifully, though, working with the slope. Guy who played a lot of bunker shots this way was Seve Ballesteros, had a huge, wide foundation, had no lower body movement, hardly at all. And we all know what a good bunker player he was. To get close to this whole location. Have to drive the ball far enough to get around the corner to even get a look at it. So it really takes the option of playing conservatively right away from the players. 
And Dottie, isn't the mantra all week, just go to the middle of the green no matter where the hole is? It's so hard. Back to eight, Michelle Wee in the native area, right of the fairway. Eighth hole has been very, very difficult all day. That's a terrific shot from there. It's actually the third hardest hole on the golf course to this point. Playing about four and a half. You can see that ball uh, just back in her stance, and she is so good at compressing that golf ball with uh, the shaft just uh, leading the club head to the ball. And that's how, how she hits that ball off that very tight um, and bare sand. Players who were not so very tall, players who actually were five foot two, five foot three and under, were better putters. And she wanted to try to get herself a few of the golf ball as if she were not six feet tall. So that is what um, was the beginning of trying this. And I don't think there was anyone who really wasn't critical, but uh, she has putted so much better. At the end of 2012, she was 119th is putting stats. She's moved up some 80 spots. Beautiful speed. She talks about it being, so she hangs there with like little T-Rex arms. They just kind of shift back and forth. Now Michelle Wee on the tee at number nine, par three. Shortest hole on the course. Hole is really tucked on the left. This was very, very close to the whole location that the guys had for round one last week. That's not bad. And now at nine, Michelle Wee. Michelle is just uh, four paces off the edge of the green. Dottie, I think she's going to put this like a five or six footer just firmly at the beginning. Then it'll slope downhill and gradually get ex uh, acceleration. There are putts around here. You just have to trust it. You have to know how far you need to feel it and then just let it go. Sometimes that's really hard to do. That was really nice judgment of the speed right there. Excellent. Everybody will be hunching way over as they putt now, the way she has putted, and it's led to much better performance. She's already at 22 rounds this year in the 60s on the LPGA Tour. That's more than she had all of last year. Still only three career wins. She'll be 25 later this year. She's another who can speak to the Lucy Lee situation. Is 11 too young? Michelle was 13 when she played in her first Open. She said it's not too young. She should just come out here and enjoy the experience, talk to the pros, and try to learn from them. I think it's about me. He said Michael Jordan can't play. He just thinks he can play. <laughs> At 10, third shot on the way for Michelle Wee. Look out for this one. Mark, she drove it left into the native grasses again, chose to lay out with a wedge. So she made a mess of that. Because she was forced to just punch out from the sandy, grassy area. She's now got a putt of, gosh, this is almost 30 feet. a birdie at 10. Playing that three quarter knockdown yeah. shot that she played so beautifully when she won in Hawaii, Judy. And she had the room to uh, kind of drill the ball in there. Watch this ball get compressed. She just compresses the golf ball, unlike many women, just purely from a physical strength standpoint, can't do. How about the wobble in that shaft oh, as well? Just phenomenal. And now she's she's delivering the club and with such confidence. We have the Michelle Wees of the world and the Lexi Thompsons of the world and uh, Jessica Corda. And they want to putt like those players that are five feet tall. <laughs> right. Well, players six feet tall has been putting well. Michelle Wee. I was going to say, add, a, add 12 inches to those women <laughs> you were just describing. Michelle said she was, I think, 5'7 at age 11 or 12. Yes. When she was comparing herself to what she said was cute little Lucy Lee, she said she was ginormous and a bit pudgy at that age. And Michelle's a decent chance here for birdie. Uh, it's going to have a little bit of movement to it from right to left, so see if she reads that well. 
this whole play. It's so tough for the first couple of rounds for the guys last week. In fact, I think through the first day, it was the toughest hole on the golf course. Well, we referenced Lucy Lee so much of the attention of this championship because it's harder and more brown along the edges to 12. Where Roger Mulpey has joined this group. How you doing down there, Roger? I'm good, Steve, and you? I'm doing fine, thank you, <laughs> Michelle Wee. Oh, it's warm out here. I don't know how it is in your tower, but it's warm out here. 64 and cloudy oh, in here. Oh, don't rub it in, Steve. It's okay. This should meander a little bit to her left. when you go in front of a group. How about that? Michelle Wee to one under par. Right there on the first page of the leaderboard. Long distance for Michelle. Starting to get that putting stroke. Made one. You guys will have next month at the Open Championship to 13. Michelle Wee on the And a hybrid club here, just kind of a little stinger, but dummy. badly hooked. This is going left. Oh, that was really quick in transition, it Roger. Was so very quick, quick Dottie, and that is no good over there. That is some of the thickest vegetation really anywhere on this entire course. People have had all kinds of problems over there. Let's take a look at this real speed mark and just watch how fast the transition is. Dottie, when you don't complete your backswing as a right-handed player, it's almost always going to go left. I'm not so sure. I would have been so kind to myself as to just say, you dummy, though. Well, there might have been another word in that <laughs> sentence. It's Michelle's golf ball. What's it look like, Roger? 154. She's kind of weed behind it. She's going to have to go through with a club hit for impact, but it's risky. Not, not wasting any time. Well, this left of the hole, no matter will it hold. That is really very good if it stops. Even if it doesn't stop, it's still a very good place to miss it. It's all just, just about 30 feet, maybe just inside that. But as Dottie said, this now from behind the hole uphill all the way to the hole, actually pretty steeply uphill. Should move to her left early on. May straighten up a little bit near the cut, but uh, overall it is a right to left putt. She's already made two of them from this distance today. Good look at her grip that there, left hand low. She has done for a long time. I mentioned before, her back is not totally parallel to the ground now. She's slowly raising it up about a quarter of an inch a day, it seems like. There's a good look there, beautiful look. Really rolling it nicely. Even the ones that haven't gone in look good. Take one more look at this one, as Roger said, left all the way. She thought it had a chance right about there. Just broke across the hole, but if she can get out of here with a four, that would be a very good score after a horrendous tee shot. Par four, playing 408 yards today. And it's a drive that plays somewhat downhill, fairway bunkers on the left-hand side of the fairway and waste area right. Good driving hole here, but one, one I think is kind of a comfortable driving hole for most players. Shaw can send it down the right. Plenty of movement. We're moving just a touch back toward the center. Exactly, Daddy. She starts this one right and trying to bring it back. It looks like it's coming back to the right center of the fairway. from 111. Not the best angle from the right-hand side of the fair, but certainly an accessible hole location. Okay. Although not exactly on the same line, I think she had to pick up something from watching Amy Yang's putt. And this certainly is makeable, very makeable. It would be her fourth birdie of the opening round. You'll recall that Martin Keimer, when he shot his record 65 in the opening round at the men's open one week ago, made six birdies. Well, if she's had a tendency this year, it is uh, not to get the ball to the hole. So this downhill putt 
should be one that really suits her. see what anybody else was doing. She went sort to get in her own world. She turned around and looked exactly backwards. Raj, what did you used to do? I used to look for a bench in the shade somewhere. That's what I used to do. <laughs> did you find one out there now? Uh, no, but the good news is this team basically is all in shade, so uh, uh, not so oppressive right here on this team. Seven here now for uh, Michelle here. in the renovation they softened a little to create some more space on the on the right side and in some Sit. green on the right one of the few Sit. greens that have the shot changed that one's too long and she knew it as soon as she hit it oh. that, was a, that was a good shot very good shot it's just never going to sit if you have that far deep in the green even though the whole location today uh, which tells me that she's going to try to bump it into the bank and have it pop up onto the green. I was afraid it took a little out too soon, but that was just fine. Well, that's pretty classy, Roger. Three-year-old from Naples, Florida. Now to 15. Michelle Wee to save her par. Pretty much left it right underneath the hole. I wouldn't think this would do much at all. Pretty straight. Three. Well done. Fantastic, Michelle. Now remains one shot back of Stacy Lewis. Look at that leaderboard. Paula Creamer in there at one under par with three holes remaining. Start this is Michelle Wee on the tee. Big dog leg left. Really big par four. That was a big swing, Mark Rolfing. Yeah, this tee shot so suits Michelle Wee. It's one where she can let it rip. It really does, Judy. You know, so much now we're seeing her hit these. Because a lot of those numbers are coming when she does not hit driver. Mm -hmm. So she's actually longer than that. Yes. Well, this is six iron here. It sounds real solid. It's peeling right at the very right side. Got a favorable bounce, Roger, if it slows down. Fine. You're looking to catch a break, but you never, ever do. 17, Michelle Wee. This was a moment ago from the bunker. With the bells from the chapel in the center of town, in the middle of the village going off. The village chapel, not far away, visible from from her left to right there's a nose that comes into the green out of the bunker on the left of the left side and uh, that will influence it to the right well take we haven't seen a whole lot of putts made here we've seen a lot of good shots at 17 but not a lot of putts and you'll see the difference in the color of the green through this section right here and that's where the grain changes the direction that the grass wants to lay and we've seen a lot of balls especially from hole high dive left. And this is not a spot where um, the, the putt's going to get really away from you if you putt it just a little bit more aggressively. Stacy Lewis said the other day she thinks after Michelle graduated from Stanford, put a little distance between herself and her parents, sort of took more charge of her own situation, it's made a difference. She's been a, a much more confident player. Do you think there's a correlation there? I, I buy that, and I also buy just the way you see her setting up over the golf ball to putt. This was her idea. She owned it from the very beginning, and she has really, I think, defended herself and her thoughts and her process really well. Wow. It was worth the wait. And save at 17 for Michelle Wee to stay two off the lead held by Stacy Lewis. 
Michelle hasn't won a major. She's won three times on the LPGA Tour. She was second at the Kraft Nabisco, best finish ever in the game. The right distance on your approach. Uh, you come up with a very manual birdie putt just now from 110. So noise coming from the right of the fairway. Did she go with driver or three wood off the tee? Driver and hard. Roger, was that your car driver revving up the engine? No, no, Sean, that was not. But thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> Miss right and didn't. Oh, good. Oh, good. So Michelle Lee will have that birdie putt to finish at two under and within one of the lead. Michelle Wee, but what she wants to be just one last putt. And that new putting style, relatively new, working well for today at Pinehurst. That was a birdie at 10. And this is another long birdie opportunity at 12. The thing you notice is the consistency of the speed with which the golf ball is going in. That makes it much easier to read greens that are just not easy to read. And she was second at the first major championship of the season, and she did not have that consistency of speed. So, um, bodes well for the next three days. Yeah, the speed looks perfect. Every one of these we've seen going in, that was a great sand save at 17. So she should be very confident as she looks at this short birdie putt at 18 to get her into the clubhouse at 268. If anything, I might, if, might I try to go a little left, but I don't see much in it. Only 25 putts through 17 holes today for Michelle. This one would get her within one of the lead. Just one shot off the lead with a 68 in yesterday's first round. Part her first eight holes today and then made a birdie at number 18 for the second day in a row. Closed her opening nine in one under par for the day. Now near the end of her round, a gorgeous shot at the long eighth hole. Yeah, she was uh, well back at the eighth, and the eighth is, one, is playing as the third hardest hole on the golf course today. Today, that hole location way back in the green on eight, and uh, not a lot of players getting it close. Michelle did, and she capitalized. The putter has worked beautifully for two days now. Yesterday, just 26 putts. Summer in the clubhouse at even. Michelle Wee. A par save at 14, her putting tremendous yesterday when she needed only 26 putts, fourth best in the field. And it was very good again today. It, really every part of her game was good again today. Yeah, those 26 putts yesterday, 29 putts in the 68 today. Uh, we have often wondered if Michelle really putted well, what would it produce? Nice shot into 18, her ninth hole of the day after eight straight pars to open. She birdies 18 for the second day in a row. Today she had 14 out of the 18 greens. They made the turn at one under for the day, three under for the championship and kept it going. Tried to keep it going on number one. It turned out to be her only bogey of the day. So now we're second at eight. Yeah, I've kind of plodded along through the, the middle of the front nine, really not taking advantage of anything, didn't take advantage of the par five fifth, but turned it on to finish. This is a long second at the tough par four eighth. The putter continue to work well. You see the big gallery there. So many fans of golf waiting for 
Michelle to fulfill what seemed like the unlimited potential since we first became aware of her when she was 10 or 11 years old. Another birdie at nine, back-to-back -back 68s, and she's now the leader by... We are cruising along with a birdie and a bogey and a bunch of pars, and then you get to the finish on eight and nine, your last two holes. What clicked in there? Um, you know, I just uh, just hit some good shots and left myself some good birdie putts. You know, I just kind of played it safe all day today. Left myself a lot of 40 footers, 30 footers, but you know, it's kind of how you have to play this golf course. Um, but yeah, it felt good to birdie the last two holes, and I really can't complain. For those watching this afternoon, what is the golf course playing like today compared to what it was yesterday? Um, I think it's pretty similar. Um, there are some tough holes out there. There's obviously um, some good birdie holes. Um, there's a lot of forward tees. Um, but yeah, I think. It's a good mixture of good, you know, hard and easy holes. All the experiences you put yourself in in the last few years, and especially of late playing so well, do you sense that you're better prepared for the next 36 holes than you have been in previous major championships? Um, you know, I'm just really not thinking about anything. I'm just going out there and just having fun and just trying to, you know, just try to play the best I can. You know, being in contention, being on top of the leaderboard, being near the top on the leaderboard, it's just so much fun. So, you know, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that I have this weekend um, that, you know, I'm four under par right now. I'm, you know, I take it. Um, so I'm really excited for this weekend. Great playing. We'll see you on Saturday. Thanks. Thank you. You adopted last year late. It's got to go. Well, the tabletop style has really worked for Michelle this year. She's it's this light turn to the left here. You see the physio tape on Michelle's left leg. She's had that pretty much all championship week long. Just uh, her knee says it can, just kind of keeps it more in place, kind of keeps the blood flowing over on that side. It's become kind of an artistic. <laughs> expression as well. And nicely done. Yeah, good putt. Uh, she remains uh, without a three putt in this championship. Stays at four under, even on the day. Uh, five straight pars since a bogey and a birdie in the first three holes. Uh, Michelle's got a seven iron here in a hole located on the left rear portion of the green, upper level plateau to the left. Wind coming a little left to right. It's a pretty good line. That should be a little right. Yeah, that's great. Underneath the hole. Back to even at 1,200. And finally, Michelle Wee gets to play a shot. Yeah, Rod, this is uh, almost on the identical line yes, that uh, Thompson just put it on, right? Had to get a great look at it. Fair remake. So what of a turn of events as we saw in the final round at the first major when Lexi just raced out ahead of Michelle played really aggressive golf ended up winning that first major by three over Michelle. And now Lee puts a birdie alongside Thompson's double moves it to five under and she's now far. We go back to Michelle Wee now, Roger. There's no more than seven iron here. Uh, very little air moving, but what there is is helping the player slightly here as well. So I was like a nice right to left seven iron and would be the right club. It was a beautiful seven iron. She played at nine. I think Michelle has been the favorite from the very start. Just with her length and uh, her ability to hit the different shots around the greens. 18 holes local, 36 holes sectional. And Michelle Wee getting ready at the 10th. And along with Caddy Duncan French, have looked really hard at this putt, Roger, some 40 feet almost. I would say a little bit more than that. And uh, I think through the first part of the putt, it might go out a little bit to her left. When you get up near the hole, there's a the slope that comes into the green out of the bunker uh, to her left that may straighten it up some. And with a conservative game plan this week, she has putted brilliantly her lag putts.
uh, this week. She flattened her putter. This is from earlier this year at the Kraft Nabisco. And I want to show you here, look how the toe of the putter is off the ground. Now, her instructor, David Ledbetter, has been telling her for quite some time with this change in your setup position, the putter needs to be flatter. Well, they literally flattened at four and a half degrees, Annika, which is a big difference. And now the putter is... Begin that ride for Glory. Back to 10. And Michelle Wee for birdie. Michelle Wee, the leader by four at the Women's Open, off the tee at 11. A lengthy par of four here at 444 yards, and that is left immediately deep into the pines. She has a tendency to be a little quick in her transition. You can see she gets to the top, but then fires very quickly with her hips. Yeah, Look at she, that. Yeah, she tries to get the club coming back down before she moves the hips, but sometimes, Monica, it seems as though her swing to me is, gets shorter and shorter. Uh, uh, either sideways or a little backwards even uh, across the bunker left of the fairway, and then it has to stop it before it gets the rough on the other side coming out of this pine stride. Not necessarily a slam dunk automatic. You can do it. She's coming out towards you. I think my only is going to go at this one, right? No, I don't put it down so. on it a little yeah. bit. Lucy Lee is following this group. Lexi Thompson was 12 really, really, like when she played her first women's open the shell 13. So I kind of know the early drill at this championship. Yeah, we'll want this to get down. Drew? Just on the edge. Just on the edge, but that's very similar to where we saw Paula Creamer just have so much problem with her approach. What's the secret out of pine needles, Annika? You gotta hit the ball first. <laughs> yeah, I would put the ball further back in the stands and make sure the hands are in front. So we don't get the club to turn over. Yardage books from Keegan Bradley and Ricky Fowler kind of worked it into her own color-coded such matter to more homework for this event than any other golf tournament she has ever tried to prepare for. Yeah, if she's done her homework well, she knows she can roll it up from the front to the center of the green. And just playing a low one going up to the left side of the green. And that abbreviated finish comes up a little short. So he's there in three at this par four. Check out this ball strike. Well, this is a, one of the best golf swings in women's golf today. Look at the way she compresses that ball. You see how the divot is really starting way behind the ball. You know, coming into this championship, she was really one we talked about. Everybody said she hits it so high. Long way away for bogey five, Roger. Yeah, about 25 feet, and this is uh, all uphill and turn from her right to left. What a year it's been, Annika, for Michelle Wee, this resurgent year, one for the third time, eight top tens in 12 events. She's already equaled the number of top tens in a season in her career so far this year. Yes, and an interesting stat is she's had two rounds in the 60s and the 30 rounds of the U.S. Open, and that's what she had starting out this week. What a danger of dropping two here. All the way back, 28 uh, steps. Well, in Thursday's first round from this tee, uh, Michelle drove it within 71 yards of the hole, so it's kind of a runway down there. You get that hot hook going that she can hit, and it can chase it more. Uh, this is to the right, blocked, native area, I believe. Maybe even pine trees. Well, that may be a little compensation for the tee shot on the previous hole. Uh, you hit one way left, you think about it, on the next. Way here, and those are not considered obstructions. There's no relief. Ball's played as it lies, and uh, it has a line of pine trees between herself and the hole that's going to get in the way, and there's also a cross bunker short right of the green that would be a, a problem. So she can advance yeah. this some, but it's basically... Stand nice and still, please, guys. Away. 
first. Yeah. Left to the side, whole side? Yeah. 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 playing a third shot, not just necessarily pitching the ball out, but trying to pitch the ball out so you have a good number for your next shot. And make sure you get out of trouble. All right. And it's safely in the center of the fairway. And into the hole. Now there is a low area about midway back on the green that runs the ball off to the left. Now, so that's something to pay attention to. And if she gets a little too aggressive and gets much past the hole, it will run off the back. So not a simple little pitch. I would think you want to keep this a little bit right of the hole. It's funny. The swing didn't resemble the practice swings. Practice swings were very aggressive. She got down into the ground with them. And that swing was a little, to me, more tentative. And she didn't strike down. Kind of got the ball. Yeah, and this one's going to have a little left turn in it as well. Go along nicely and then uh, suffer a double bogey. Now looking to maybe give away another stroke here. It really kills momentum. Get playing defensively on a U.S. Open golf course, and uh, it becomes very tough. Roger, does it look like Michelle ever looks at the leaderboard? No, not really. I don't think she pays much attention to him. And I don't know if there's any real need to look at him right now at this stage in the proceedings anyway. How close attention did you pay to leaderboards? I guess it depending on the moment, Annika? <laughs> yeah, I, I like watching leaderboards because I wanted to know where, you know, where I was standing. Not for the first time today, Dan and Annika, Michelle is not alone at the top of the leaderboard. She now has some company, Amy Yang and Michelle Wee right there at three. She is from back to 13. And Michelle Wee. And I here, I'm looking for that low darter up here. Try to hit a low one straight with Chase it down there. And that's just what she's trying to do and has done it well. She'll be fine. That gets her on the left side of the fairway, which uh, will give her a much right? better angle. Right? Cut off. Maybe one for Michelle. Great angle here, 104. Still think you want to look a little left of the hole as this is headed. Just a little bit to the right, I would think. Nearly every player has missed to the right. Not Michelle, that was way wide left. That was, that might have missed her line by almost a foot. Over to, to B once again for the second consecutive day here at Pinehurst. A couple of par attempts left here at 13. Michelle will be first. Not much in this, just being very, very careful. It just does not look comfortable, does it? Well, but it looks simple to me, Dan, in that once she gets into that position, it's very easy to just rock your shoulders. You can see she gets her arms locked in against her side. So there's very little hand or arm motion, and she just kind of rocks. How'd you make Phil into a right hand? Well, right you know, the technology. Magic <laughs> Our production people are really good. Yes, they are. And he actually is right handed. He just plays golf oh. left hand. Well, that one's in good shape as well. So, Thompson and Wee. That was at the 15th, and now back to Michelle Wee at 14. flight this ball down, see if she can land it short and skip it back. That's not a very good shot. Now the whole location today is 20. Shall we for par. And if she was paying attention, Annika, I should have seen that Lexi's ball move a little left as it got up around the hole. You can see her caddy there early on, really sitting low, trying to help her with the line. Some players like caddies read them and some 
players do not want them to help them. Gotta hit it. It really looks like both of them are a little cautious on the greens today. So, Michelle, we had it to six under just a few holes ago. Double at 11, bogey at 12, another bogey at 14, and all of a sudden, Amy Yang sits on top by herself. So we stay here now with Michelle Wee, who for the first time steps up on a tee box and does not have either the outright or a share of the lead. Yeah, the shortest par three on the golf course uh, today. Yeah. This is a seven iron. Roger, I heard her say, you know, try a little three quarter cut seven iron. So, obviously, you're trying to play a pretty elaborate shot here. Let's see how she pulls it off. Attempt here, Raj. And a pretty good look here. Uh, not a lot of break in this, but might go a little bit to her left. Lexi uh, has already put it up short of the hole. And we'll have a shortish putt left for par. I think she's got a feeling she's got a great chance to hold this putt. Saw there to the T at 16. Shall we? Yeah. A solid T shot. The right center of the fairway, drawing just a little bit. That's very good. You know, it's a good shot when the player picks up the T immediately. 16. And Michelle Wee, second shot dead center of the fairway. The spot is short. And that one is short, but on the green, so she'll have a pretty attempt on being a long one. Gary, you mentioned, uh, you know, Michelle being so steady on short pots. I would think that this tabletop would make it really difficult for a longer swing. I, I would agree. I think, you know, you would have to rotate your shoulders so much to create the momentum and the speed. But just there's not much going on back here by the cup. Her three putt avoidance has been impeccable. She calls it a drawbridge right now. It goes up about a quarter of an inch here. Who knows? Could be the beginning of a long relationship there as we go back to Michelle Wee. And she has eight iron. Okay. In 161 yard par three. And that's played downhill some oh, four or five yards. Holding the pose. Like I would think that that's within just a few feet of where she was aiming. That was a... With a man hoping to get out of here unscathed for the ladies. Now Michelle Wee for birdie. Over at 17. You know what impresses me the most, I think, is, you know, today, despite a few mistakes, uh, Michelle is really keeping her composure and still smiling out there. Well, she constantly used the word fun. I want to go out and have fun. And let's face it, Michelle Wee has been through in her career under the microscope from such an early age, the up and down, turbulent things that have happened in her career.
This was Michelle Wee's tee shot at 18. Now tied for the lead with Amy Yang while we were away. She can hit a good one here with these tees moved up. She'll have a very short second shot in, and she has done it. So we in good shape now. The only player other than Yang under par for the championship. Inkster, Meadow, Nayun Choi, strong, but a good solid putt. You know, it might not be a, such a bad thing not to be the leader coming into the last last day. She's been the leader most of the week, and uh, it's tough to uh, to be the leader to sleep on the lead and go out there with all the eyes looking on you. Now she has to share the the spotlight. So it'll be Wee and Yang in the final group. And I would think too, Hanukkah, she has to, you know, feel like she's kind of gotten away with something. I mean, it's very rare in a, in a U.S. Open that you play four really good rounds. I mean, you're going to have one day probably where you just don't quite have it. And if this ends up being her poor round, uh, you know, 72, uh, that's that's not that bad on this golf course. Yeah, re, you know, no players ever shot all four rounds in the 60s at a U.S. Women's Open. Michelle had a chance as the day began with those pair of 68s. The third of the three shot, 36 hole lead, and she will be tied for the 54 hole lead with Amy Yang. So everybody in on this Saturday at Pinehurst, and Michelle Wee is in position to win in the mainland here at the Mecca of American Golf, Pinehurst number two. Rough patch for Michelle came in the early stages of that back nine with a double at 11 at these at this women's open and we'll hear from Michelle in just a moment in the meantime some examples from her day it wasn't a great start misses a par putt at the first which dropped Michelle from four under to three under but then kept it together a birdie attempt here at the short par four third Lexa Thompson just made a birdie before Michelle and then uh, she topped it here and then Lexi Thompson also birdied the fifth to get to three under, and it looked like Michelle Wee would match her butt. Yeah, the putts didn't go in today, Dan. Uh, 55 pu uh, putts through the first two rounds, 34 on the greens today. All right, rest pars until this ninth hole. Yeah, this hole was playing a little longer today, 170 yards, but uh, she hit a beautiful shot there and used the ridge to, to get closer to the hole. And made the birdie to get to five under. And then some problems at 11, but not before a nice hole at the 10th. Yeah, par five with the tees moved up. Big drive by Michelle. Second shot of just 175 yards safely into the center of the green. Two put birdie from there. And then here's the problems at 11. Yeah, here is uh, the beginning of a stretch where they dropped a few shots. You can see a very quick backswing from Michelle, and she got into trouble with her driver here, and uh, that certainly didn't help. Ended up making a double bogey, so she drops from six under to four under, and then at the 12th. Yeah, very nice hole, and Dan, as a player, when you've gone left one time, <laughs> you're thinking about not going left again. She did. This one went way right. So even though Michelle had it to six under through 10 holes, I mean, she did. Michelle, we asked Amy the same question. What was it like out there for you today? It was a uh, front night was a lot easier than the back nine. Um, it was just it was good. The golf course was good. A couple of tees back, a couple of tees forward. It looked like the par fives I could really take advantage of, um, which I'm really happy I did today. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a uh, it's tough out there. You know, it's uh, it's not easy. Did anything happen at the turn, or was it the golf course <laughs> that turned on you? Um, I think I just uh, system just got a little overheated, just a little hot. Um, but yeah, I just I just didn't drive it well a couple of holes, and you know, just really can't be on the trees here. Just punched out, and then. You know, didn't really uh, leave myself in good position. Um, but, you know, I felt like I grinded out there. I made, you know, a couple of good par putts coming in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, I can't complain still. For those of us watching from outside the ropes, what is the pressure like in the third round in the final group of a U.S. Women's Open? Um, you don't sleep very well, um, but, you know, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I'd much rather be nervous and 
um, you know, all of that on the first tee, then, you know, kind of just not being contention. I'm just so happy and being contention. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm definitely, um, you know, obviously very nervous. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. You've gained a lot of experience. We talked about this yesterday afternoon. Throughout the years, especially in the last six months when you played so well, you had a chance at the Kraft Nabisco, the season's first major, months ago. Now you have another chance coming up tomorrow. Do you apply any of those experiences that you learned that day in the California desert, or is it a completely different ball game this week? Um, I mean, I think somewhat you can learn somewhat from that. Um, but, you know, overall, I'm just as grateful to have another opportunity. You know, I just am just really grateful that I have a chance to win. You know, tomorrow I'm just going to go out there and play as hard as I can. Um, who knows what will happen? Um, but I, I'm going to hope for the best and try my best tomorrow. Last thing, you were the favorite coming in. You're probably the favorite with 18 holes to play. What's that like? It's a lot of fun. It feels great, you know, being an American, you know, kind of, you know, being in contention for our, you know, national championship um, means a lot to me. Um, so I'm just going to go out there and, you know, play with pride and uh, try the best I can. Been terrific so far. We'll see you on Sunday. Thanks, Michelle. Final round of the U.S. Women's Open at Pinehurst. Michelle Wee is on the cusp of her first major championship. She was tied for the lead to begin the day of her own for par at that same first hole. So an opening bogey for Wee and Yang as they both dropped his third from 131 yards. A beauty enabled her to save par and stay golf. Michelle Wee looks for much more than her first mainland moment because the biggest title in women's golf hangs in the balance for the player overflowing with talent and now seemingly so ready to come crashing through that major gate to join the rest. It's going to be a very interesting Sunday as we get you out live at the 7th and bring in Steve Sands. Good afternoon, Dan. There is Michelle Wee currently with that two-shot lead. Again, that a tied with Amy Yang at two under par. She's given one back. So much pressure on her. She talked about it yesterday after the third round, but she said she embraces that pressure. She doesn't fight it. And Gary and Anik, you can imagine, that's the most important thing in a situation like this. It certainly is, and uh, you know she's not a stranger to being in the last group of major championship. But uh, you know this is probably as good as Michelle has has looked on a golf course. Roger, you're down on the golf course. She drove it left, but had a nice approach shot to this point. Yeah, I think uh, there's a little left in this putt left turn, but uh, more importantly, deceptively quick. Gary, it looked like she thought she might have made it. Yeah. Uh, the speed was just about perfect. It's four of her par on her round as Michelle Wee now lines up this par putt. Roger, anything left in this? Not really, Steve. You know, it's left center putt, maybe. She will take her time, though. No use in being hasty at this point. Shot lead. Let's get you over to nine. Number one in driving accuracy, number one in greens hit in regulation in the field, but she was putting the ball very poorly. Uh -huh. Had 99 putts. Spent a lot of time on the putting green after yesterday's third round and has figured something out. Putting the ball beautifully today. That is we off the tee at the eighth, who has uh, reeled off six pars in a row after the opening bogey. Showed you how she saved it with her second. Raj, uh, three wood off the tee, so uh, a little longer second shot left. Yes, 187 left of the hole. I'd gone with driver in round one and certainly yesterday and had much shorter approaches. It's now ball above her feet, 187, hold back right. Trying to play a left to right cut in there. It's going just a little right of the hole. Yeah. Oh, and hang on. Oh, yeah. Number 
two, add her name to the legends that have won here. And out at the eighth, Michelle to get the two under. Slow putt here, suddenly uphill. Should be another stress-free par for we. Amy Yang has missed her birdie attempt, still has a little left for par to remain at plus two. Three behind we. Hold on, you, you kind of, do I play aggressive? Do I play conservatively? And it sometimes plays with your mind. Well, the group ahead, Inkster missed her par attempt, so Julie picked up her fifth bogey of her opening nine, falling back to plus six. Now full seven behind we, the only player under par as she steps here to the ninth tee. Raj, I think a big couple of holes coming up here. Easy hole location here at nine. You've got a sideboard to the left of the hole. You can make birdie here easily, and then she's got the short par five tenth coming. Agreed. This uh, a seven iron here, a little breeze against the players. So she's stood this up in the air a little higher than her normal trajectory left of the hole, and that's got to get in. That's deep. Depending on how she hit, them. Yeah. maybe look at her, um, yeah. look at the swing, analyze her yeah. uh, technique. Yeah, Let's, she's got to play this way to the right up onto that slope and just kill it up there and let it drift down. This could go right off the green if she hits it too hard. Challenging bunker shot from Michelle Wee at the par three ninth. You can see playing it way to the right, trying to get it onto the slope and get the down to the hole. Yeah, that was probably one of her best bunker shots uh, this week. She really hasn't had much success. Uh, it was only 20% so far in sand saves, but that was really a good shot. And let's take a look at this uh, technique. I love the way that she's bending her, le her legs, and you can see coming in, ball in front of her left foot. And the, the key here is really to keep the club open. And you can see how high that ball comes off the face. Hands are low. Um, the front nine. Well, you've seen this putting style by Michelle Wee. It is really all her own, and it has had stain power ever since she adopted it in the season-ending event of 2012. I was putting horribly, and I felt uncomfortable. And in the middle of the round, I just kind of bent over, and I was like, oh, this feels good. And I kind of putted with it. And then people started to ask me about it, and I was like, oh, it doesn't feel any different. And I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it just uh, felt comfortable from there. I really don't care if I look cool or not, um, you know, as long as it works, as long as it's, you know, as long as I feel good, um, I'm just going to keep doing it. Doesn't care how she looks as long as she watches him disappear into the bottom of the cup. This for par would cap off a beautiful up and down from the bunker. And that's how we ends her front nine. Started with a bogey and reeled off eight consecutive pars after it to stay at one under. Well, Dan, the one thing that's interesting to me is, you know, when she's bent over this much, you want to make sure that the eyes are right over the ball. And, you know, that is the one thing to me when you're that far bent over it could be easy to let the eyes get outside the line of the ball and if you do that's going to be a real problem but uh, you know so far it seems like they're right on the money and again she had the terrible putting slot this is one of the most right side with a hard draw here mark i was going to say roger this is one of the most important rounds of michelle wee's life and i think this is one of the most important holes in that round Yesterday, Mark, she had driver an eight iron to this par. 70 left, 60 to cover the front edge. It's a little downwind, and a little bit left to right, maybe. Keep in mind, folks, this is a par five. Very important shot for Michelle. Pretty crisp. Pretty good looking shot. Yep. Day. An eagle try now, Mark, for Michelle Wee. 
And Roger Maltby, I would think this is a very nice putt for her. A little underneath the hole might go just a little right. And I can confirm now that was an eight iron from the fairway. So a couple of big hits here. A great look at Eagle. I love that she's playing aggressive. That's why she has this eagle putt. from Michelle. She's had an eerie calmness about her herself all week long, but you can see just how important that hole. Like it would be a great spot for that little low stinger that she likes to hit. Just uh, get the thing on the ground quickly, let it run, hit it nice and straight. And Gary, she birdied the 10th yesterday and then doubled this hole, bogeyed the 12th, bogeyed the 14th, when it looked like she might distance herself. Well, this is that low stinger, it's right up to center. It's going to be right across the ground for I think it's on the ground more than it's in the air. Well, that's, uh, you know, a good way to keep the ball in play, especially on a course that's running. Right to left, but you got to be looking a little underneath the hole and right of the hole here. of men players. I mean, look at right here. We zoom in, look at how the shaft is ahead of the club face. She's hitting down on the ball. She's spinning it. She's compressing it. Look at the spine angle. Look at the head staying down and the extension with the arms pulling the body on around. I mean, it's no wonder that she's hitting these fabulous iron shots into these greens. When you have that kind of speed and compression on the ball, you're going to spin it and you have a chance to control it. You talk all about the players that we have seen now for years and years, and we'll throw you in there, Annika, as, uh, you know, one of the most consistent, if not the most consistent players ever. But as far as just pure natural talent ability, I don't think anybody has more than this now 24-year-old. It's just been packaging it up, putting it all together, getting in the mental state that she needs to be in to win championships like this. Yes, it's taken her a little while, a journey, but uh, what we're seeing now is uh, the full potential. Twice. They played it back twice today, back 416 yards. And into the breeze, but she does have out fairway wood here. Not uh, going with the driver, Gary. Maybe she heard you. <laughs> well, I tell you, if she could replicate the shot she hit on the last hole off the tee, it would work just fine. Oh, yes, it would. That low BB would be perfect into this wind. shorts and you see the kinesio tape on her left leg she says that's been like an arts and crafts session every morning her leg's been a little sore she likes to put that tape on there to kind of keep it in place but it, it it is it does add even more color to the statuesque we and she's on her way to adding substance to that style right now with a four shot lead 169 here I think underneath the hole and left of the hole would be in order. This is going to be underneath. But okay, if it stops, that's all right. Yeah. On a weather delay event out there in Colorado. Back to 12. Where Michelle Wee is short of the green. Looks like she's in the brown stuff, Raj. Yeah, electing to chip it. Uh, putting, I think, would be a real good option from here. Uphill. Oh, okay. 
Spends a lot of time now that she lives in Jupiter at the Bears Club, and they have a wonderful short game practice area there. She, you know, Luke Donald hangs out there, Keegan Bradley. She plays some with those guys, and she was saying she's learned a lot of shots watching the men. Ball way back in her stance. Look how far hands are ahead of the club face. And also how low they are mm -hmm. to the ground. Yep, great technique. She's sticking to her routines, even on these shorter putts, just making sure that it goes as planned. Get up and down, another par. Check it off. That's all she's looking for at this point. Pars. Pars are good. Top ranked player in the world, Stacy Lewis. Very, very carefully taking a look at this birdie putt. And Kay, you know, she knows what it means to get her to even and maybe with a chance. She wants so badly to win this championship and probably in the past it's hurt her how much she wants it. She's trying to manage her emotions better. Well, you could see her there using her fingers standing over the line of the putt. She's been working with uh, Mark Sweeney, the guy that uh, created aim point and is now working with some of the players. We see it with Adam Scott quite a bit. And uh, just another way of trying to uh, improve her putting. This one's very makeable. Exactly what she had to do, Dan, to have any chance whatsoever. Four birdies in the back nine, Gary. Yeah, wonderful rhythm to the stroke. Release the putter head. You see the putter head going past the shaft after she makes contact. Big birdie effort. Four bogeys. It's got to be the most birdies that anybody's uh, made in a round here, perhaps. We'll check. You know, what you have done or what's coming up, just trying to relax your mind, and it looked like Michelle was just doing that. Yeah, she waited about 50 yards behind the tee in the shade. She said after yesterday's round, she got a little hot, a little tired on the backside, so I was trying to relax in the shade here prior to this tee shot. Hybrid club here. It's just that low stinger. Kind of headed up the right side of the very right center. That's okay. That's going to find that right greenside bunker, but plenty of green to work with, and you're playing back uphill. Mark, in the uh, final round of the men's open, uh, saw a number of birdies made from that position, way more from the right than from the left. Prior to this tee shot, hybrid club here. It's just that low stinger. Kind of headed up the right side of the very right center. That's okay. That's going to find that right greenside bunker, but plenty of green to work with, and you're playing back uphill. Mark, in the uh, final round of the men's open, uh, saw a number of birdies made from that position, way more from the right than from the left. No doubt a shot. Out of 13 is the leader. Second shot for Michelle at the par four. Got room to work with here. Well, it's going to be deep. All right, but that's okay. Yeah, okay. Thank that you. would be a very difficult putt for her right. there. She would dearly love a four right now. Yes, and this is all about speed control, this putt. Uh, downhill, quick. Let's try to get the right pace. Might go a little bit to her right, but uh, that's not the big issue. Let's see how the table, tabletop style works coming down the stretch here. Saw it in those highlights. Uh, they can really hit some wonderful shots. And so can Michelle Wee, who wants to be a part of that highlight reel. This was just earlier off the tee at 14, kind of wanted to play that low shot yeah. right up the right side. Is it going to hang in there? 
tucked into the native area, but the lie appears to be fine. And here's that stinger that she likes to hit. Short backswing, hands lead the club head, hit down on it. Look how much of a divot she takes after she makes contact with the ball. And look how low, Dan. <laughs> Good thing Roger wasn't standing in front of that one. That one wouldn't have gotten over his head. Being very yeah, clean on firm sand. Uh, got a nice angle at the hole, but I still got to believe center of the green is the idea. If you can keep it a little underneath and right of the hole, that's uh, really going to give you your best chance of making four. Yeah, Get easier to take it. Like it's done, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to roll out. It looks a lot of it today. It's just a Eight, I guess. Yeah. Just that low hole. Yeah. Okay. So, like, just left of the flag to, to like, end up to that big tree. Yeah. Like, just left of that. Yeah. Well, they're talking about all the right things. I'm talking about uh, keeping it below the hole. I'm talking about the number to the front edge of the green, which is all she needs to be looking at. conservative play as well at the right times. Now just perfect technique again. Hands well ahead, hitting down on it. And Annika, a lot of times when the ball's in that firm sand like that, players don't mind that at all. No. So if the player wants to keep the ball on the ground, we wanted to make sure that that option was available. So Michelle, we will come from behind the stick here for another look. Right. It's certainly hard to believe that she does intend to put it after, after taking relief from uh, the path. Yeah, there you go. And I think this putt swings a little bit left as he gets into the green. Now she's about five feet off the front of the putting surface. This is uphill, will swing a little left, and maybe as it dies, go back to the right zone. So many highlights and lowlights, Annika, in her career. Um, one that she was extremely criticized for was at the age of 14. Back in 2004, she became the fourth female youngest ever to compete in the PGA Tour when she played in the Sony Open. She missed the cut by a shot. She said she wanted to play with the best, but she was just coming off her first big win, the Women's Amateur Public Links Championship, and there was a lot of people who thought, what are you doing here? Well, you played an events event well. back in 2003 at Colonial. I did, and looking back, that was probably one of the highlights of my career. A little bit, uh, you know, at the age of 14, there's a lot of golf to be played at her own age, and a lot of people were wondering, is this really the best place for a young girl to be and to test herself? I always felt like you wanted to win. You wanted to learn to win at each level, you know, each age group, each level, you know, junior golf on to amateur golf before you come to the professional level. Yeah, well done. That was a solid putt. Michelle, we're talking about what happened playing with the men, and we've just been tracking Michelle. We intensely for more than a decade now because of all of her talents and Last night, Michelle says that whole journey has been nothing but a learning experience. I've definitely made a lot of mistakes, you know, along the road. I've definitely done a lot of great things as well, too. And I just learned from a lot of it. Um, you know, I think that's what life is. It, you get, there's ups and there's downs. Obviously, being under a microscope, everything, it magnifies everything. Um, but, you know, I think if it wasn't for that, then I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, I'm just really grateful for everything, um, just because of all the downs, I think it made me more grateful for, you know, these opportunities that I have today. She played in eight PGA Tour events. She never made a cut. No, she is good for women's golf. She always brings a lot of attention, and, and she's fun to watch. I mean, we've seen it here for three days, and she can drive it. She can hit low ones, and, uh, you know, now with a short game in the place that it needs to be, I mean, she has a lot to offer, so this would be huge, of course. She was saying, too, Dan, you know, after she finished college, it was almost like the start of her second career, and 
if this is the start, I think we're going to see some wonderful things in the years to come. You know, we forget she's just 24. I mean, a lot of players are just starting to come into their own at that age. So, uh, you know, with her talent, uh, if she comes on to win this event, I think we're going to see her win a lot of golf tournaments Kinda. in the very near future. Kinda. The favorite, not just coming into the week, but then with 18 holes to play, you know exactly what that's like. So what does it feel like as you make your way around a final round of a U.S. Women's Open, knowing that everybody is trying to hunt you down? Well, I think the goal is to be the favorite, uh, but it's hard to be the favorite um, because you're under the microscope and everybody's analyzing you every single shot. and. I mean, I can just imagine how many dreams Michelle has had to win this championship. And here she is, just, you know, maybe four holes away from holding that trophy. Yeah, seven iron here. And obviously, the center of the green, a good play, but not much of a backdrop behind this green. It's just kind of a dome that sits up there with a the backdrop. Well, she's shaping a little cut just left of the hole. Pretty looking shot. Oh, this is fabulous. Well, the closest shot we've seen all day on this particular hole. It's interesting. She hit seven iron, which is the same club she hit on number nine. That is 25 yards shorter. So she knows really the different distances with the irons. Well, if she's nervous. She's certainly not. And she's kind of had to uh, reorganize her mental attitude. But she's come back from that to 15. The leader to stretch her lead to four. She'll take a three, but you had a great shot like she did. She was hoping for a deuce there at the par 3 15th. Michelle Reed, three holes remaining, has a three shot lead then. And the 69, where Michelle Wee has only a few real dangerous shots left in this round, and this is one of them. And got the three wood out again. Haven't seen the driver since the 10th hole, so that club's pretty much been pretty away. But that low bullet, if she can get it turning over right to left, would really work well here. And she is using that again, and this cutting a little bit, but it's going to be okay, I think. Headed toward that bunker. That will make the bunker, and it's a question of how far up and in it it gets. Well, it's not the worst place to hit it. I mean, you know, a five here is not going to kill her by any Shall we? could be breaking through at Pinehurst in the Women's Open at the home of American golf. Here you see a good look going through the yardage books, not just one. She got a book from Ricky Fowler. She got a book from Keegan Bradley. So, you know, she's had uh, all kinds of notes that she uh, she's been using this week. In fact, yeah, she made the statement she studied uh, more before this tournament uh, about there. this golf course than any other one she's ever studied. Roger, what's the line look like? Well, a little bit yeah, of a downhill yeah. lie. Yeah. And the uh, ball is settled ever so slightly. Uh, but it's the kind of shot, really, you can kind of hit a low scooter. I would think what you don't want to do is hit it in either that cross bunker on the left well short of the green or into that bunker that is well short and right of the green as well. Just get it somewhere in front of it if you can. This is going right, and this is going to head for that bunker. It's a long bunker shot from in there. Well. Got it in the sand. But that was a very impressive play when it didn't need to be. Yeah. I mean, that was a hybrid club that, uh, you know, you could have hit a four or five iron out of there and put yourself down there 40, 50 yards short of the green. Or you could have hit an eight iron here and <laughs> yeah. put it short of that cross bunker Absolutely. that Roger was talking about. It's certainly not as far right as Michelle is wandering over there now. Thomas Pagel, uh, the length of time that they have to search for this ball. Yeah, Dan, they're going to have uh, five minutes from the, the time they started search. So uh, you saw Tom O'Toole just glance out at his watch a second ago. I'm sure he started the clock when they walked up. And, uh, they have a few minutes remaining. You hear the folks in the gallery yelling out their belief as to where that ball might have landed. Well, there is a scenario saying it's okay. even it could be in the face of the bunker. So uh, there's a confusion here as to where this ball is, ball is obviously. I think where Mike Davis is looking there is actually too far to the right of the line that the ball came in. It is just 
barely to okay. the right of the big bush, right there. Okay, can't be more than a foot or two to the right of that. It looks to me like it did maybe come down short of it. I think maybe Michelle's it. looking in the area right there. That's what's in front of that bush. Looks like they might have yes, it. Yes, it is. It is. Nike one. I mean, you certainly can mark it. Yeah, I can see it. Those are better than the base uh, of a bottom of one of these uh, wire grass uh, clumpings. So. Um, I don't know if she can get the club on it. I really haven't been able to see it, and I'm standing behind it. Uh, it, it can't be good. I, I wouldn't think there's any real, real good thing to do with this. She certainly could learn a lesson from a mistake Lucy Lee made. Obviously, the execution. Uh, but she has these shots, 100 yards in it. This is about 80 yards. And now there is cause for stress. Yes, there is. As long as it makes a six here, it'll be a one shot beat with two to play. Very different. to the right. It is really a good time to stay in the moment. Just focus on this putt. So at best, Michelle, we can walk off the 16th with a double bogey six, but she's, that lead will be gone. I'm sure Stacy Lewis is watching this, and the question is, do you start heading to the range or start putting a little bit? Wouldn't you, Annika? <laughs> I would. I certainly would as well. Stacy Lewis is, in fact, on the range right now. There she is. She will be able to tell by the reaction whether Michelle made it or not. She goes on to win this championship. She will look back at that one and say that was a really good double after the mess I made of that hole. Well, I like the reaction too. Big smile on her face. That's nice. Take a look at the low angle of this putt. Nice short backswing. Aggressive through, dead center. That's what it's been about for Michelle Wee, Mark. You've known her a long time, and you've also known her parents a long time. And times there are many who feel that they have been too much, too involved. Well, she's got an eight iron out, and I like this club choice. Uh, if anything, make your mistake in front of the green. I think uh, right now is the time to go at it pretty hard, don't you? Oh, I agree, Raj. I mean, anytime you're feeling a little anxious, you don't want to be trying to hit something easy. Take the shorter club and go ahead and hit it hard. Good. Through the years, it is time. But right not like now. where you've had a flat line. If there is a playoff, it's yeah. a three hole it's aggregate. Awesome. One, 17, and 18. And if they're still tied, they go to sudden I'm death. I'm sure the trees used to be killed though, like there's a wind yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You play the final 18 hole playoff in U.S. Women's Open history when oh. you and Pat Family first, just reached uh, North Carolina. Head at Newport Country Club all those years ago. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We got a pretty putt. 
for Michelle here. Hooking and quick. This is where you putt like Ben Crenshaw used to, Gary, huh? Pick the high line. Absolutely. As high as possible if you're going to miss, you miss on the high side because the ball is moving toward the hole. When you get it too low and it has any speed, it wants to run away. Still not a single three putt in this entire championship. that Michelle got into and didn't make the right calls on and I mean criticized for that been through a lot here she is one final hole that she's been dreaming about as far back as she can remember. Birdie falls in at 17, and wow, does that feel good. To finally get it done. I hope she's enjoying her walk. Uh, it's not often you get a chance to really soak it in. I mean, we work so hard every day and dream about these championships and then to be able to walk up 18 just like Michelle is doing now just to let it soak in there's nothing better you know, can't help but think of the you know the tabletop putting style and all the influences that have come in around Michelle we her life and her career through the years influence of her parents good or bad influence of the media everybody criticizing her throughout the way but that was her idea solely the tabletop putting style, and it really yeah, you is leave it like 20 max. one of the biggest pieces to putting it all together yeah. here. Finally, the putting, not a single three putt, and the birdie buries at 17 to give her the two shot lead. Dan, actually 25 one putts in the, one this one. championship Up. on some very one. difficult one. greens. You don't have to look cool, sure. but you're going to look cool with that trophy. Yeah, one 11. One on three. Not one twenty one yeah. and sure. One oh five. One oh eight. Yeah, I'm gonna make up one twenty one. Can show it one eleven. I think that's good. Ball short. Yeah, one ten is good. Got breath of help right to left. Okay. 
line at one time. Yeah. Downwind. Just that 52, yeah? Let's just make it real yeah, I think just that little three quarter. Yeah. I think just playing 105. Yeah. Perfect shadow. Perfect. Bogey wins it. We've got her at 120 to the hole. I gotta assume, Gary, if this gets hole high, it's a mistake. Yeah, well, they were talking in terms of trying to hit a shot that went 110 yards. Yeah. away from winning the biggest title in women's golf. You can only wonder of the emotions that are swirling through Michelle Wee right now. There's that yardage book out almost as if to distract her from what is about to happen. And sticking to her routine. I mean, we've seen this on virtually every hole, so she knows the job's not done yet. A sensational season on the LPGA Tour for the Americans, and to win their championship, have an American win their championship, this momentum uh, gets a huge boost into the second half of the season this year. Absolutely. I'm obviously very happy to see that. And uh, Mike Wan, the commissioner of the LPGA, has done a very good job as well. And of course, it helps when you have players like Michelle Wee and Stacey Lewis and Lexi Thompson playing so well. a bogey so you want to go through the routine you don't want to make the only three putt of the championship week at the last you want to kind of finish it off in style and Michelle we has certainly had plenty of that through the years success because she is just so well like and there is Stacy Lewis the top ranked player in the world who was hoping to get into a playoff with Michelle but we with that 
birdie putt that dropped at 17 to give her a two shot lead. Finishes it out with a par at 18 and a round of 70 for a two shot win. Biggest of her career. And remember, she's only 24. Let's send it down to Steve. Barely over the drinking age, and she's soaked right now, Dan, in champagne. Michelle, congratulations. How were you able to handle the pressure out there today? Uh, you know, I just had a lot of fun. You know, it was just like I said yesterday. You know, I just I woke up so excited. I just was so grateful for this opportunity. And uh, I definitely got a lot of goosebumps walking up 18 just because I, you know, thought to myself how cool it was. I kind of had the same putt as Martin. Didn't quite hit it as hard as him. But, uh, oh, my God, I just I can't believe this is happening. After what happened to you on the 16th hole, how big was that birdie putt at 17, and what were you thinking standing over that ball? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I kind of smiled after I made my double, bo double bogey putt. I was like, I just like to make it hard for myself. Um, but, you know, 17, I, you know, I kind of played well there um, the last couple of days. And, you know, that putt um, just nicely went right right at the end. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Through all the highs and lows, through all the ups and downs, did you ever have any doubt that you would be standing here as a U.S. Women's Open champion one day? You know, obviously, you know, there's there are moments of doubt in there. But at the same time, you know, I just had so many people around me surrounding me, my family, my friends, my coaches, you know, Dave Ledbert, you know, everyone, my agency, IMG, they never lost faith in me. I think that's what kind of pushed me forward. And, uh, you know, it's, just, it's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Dan, there she is, the U.S. Women's Open champion. She'll be small for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Tom O'Toole, Jr., President of the United States Golf Association, and please join me in welcoming the 69th United States Women's Open Champion, Michelle Wee. <laughs> Michelle is the first to claim our Hart and S. Semple Trophy on Pinehurst Resort's historic course number two. This treasure of American golf is now the only course to have hosted the U.S. Open, the U.S. Senior Open, the U.S. Amateur, the U.S. Women's Amateur, and now the U.S. Women's Open Championship. Pinehurst has also made the game more accessible by being a leader in welcoming women to amateur golf competition at the Women's North and South Amateur since 1903. <laughs> Michelle holds a special place in USJ history as one of two exceptional golfers to prevail in the past two weeks on the same course at our Memorial Back-to-Back -back Championships. Michelle, I'm honored to present you with two distinguished awards. First, our gold medal presented to all United States Women's Open Champions since 1953. And second, I present you with the Horton S. Semple Trophy, a time-honored emblem that signifies the champion of our U.S. Women's Open Championship. Michelle, congratulations.
Want to hold it? Or you want to put it down? I'm going to hold it. girl. There you go. <laughs> Uh, congratulations, Michelle. What was it like out there playing those difficult 18 holes? It was amazing. Um, you know, I said from the beginning of the week, you know, it's just so much fun. This Pinehurst was amazing. Um, it, uh, Stacey made it difficult out there for me today, for sure. You know, I saw her shoot four under and, you know, it kind of made me work hard, give myself a little heart attack on 16. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had, a, I had an awesome time today. The fans were amazing. I mean, the, the turnout, you guys, unbelievable. Um, you know, all the volunteers. Um, it was just so much fun walking with Mike and Tom as well too um, so I had a blast today last night we had a conversation and I was asking you about the pressure of trying to close out a US Women's Open and you said that you need to embrace it not fight it what enables you to have that type of inner resolve yeah, I mean, just, just to have that opportunity, just to, you know, be in that situation, I'm just so grateful for it. And, you know, even though I was putting for double bogey on 16, I was just so happy that I, ha I was, you know, in that, you know, moment, you know, having that opportunity. So, you know, I'm just so grateful for everything. I'm honored to be up on the stage, standing next to Stacey and Brooke and everyone here. And uh, it's, a, it's a real honor for me. I think people forget that you're only 24 years of age. It seems like we've been watching you forever and ever. Potential is a difficult word to carry on a young woman's shoulders. Now you've come to fruition here with a U.S. Women's Open trophy in your arms. What's next for you? Um, you know, I'm just going to keep having fun, uh, just keep improving a little bit, and I just want to just try to become the best uh, player that I can be. Congratulations. You certainly were the best player this week. Thank you. Michelle Weed, the 69th U.S. Women's Open champion. Congratulations.